The officer that was involved in the shooting of uh, Michael Brown was Darren Wilson. He's been a police officer for six years, has had no, uh, no disciplinary action taken against him. Today, police releasing the name of the officer involved and more details about what happened the day Michael Brown was shot and killed. But the community in Ferguson, Missouri, still angry and want to know more about what happened just before his death. Police released surveillance video indicating Brown fit the description of a suspect in a strong arm robbery at a convenience store. The Brown family attorney unhappy with that, saying they were denigrating their son. Uh, reaction from the family still unclear how the robbery led to the shooting. The police chief says the officer didn't know Brown was a robbery suspect. The Ferguson Police Department waited six days to release the name of that officer, which they've done, and they cited security concerns as a reason. The initial refusal to release the officer's name prompted angry demonstrations and a lot of First Amendment questions. Joining us now to discuss those decisions are Mackenzie Romero. She is the president of the Utah chapter of Society of Jour Professional Journalists. And and First Amendment attorney Austin Ryder. Thanks for joining us here today. Now, we, uh, KSL News Radio received a lot of questions from people saying why the push to release the officer's name. I'd be interested to hear from both of you. What's wrong with letting the evidence and the details surface before releasing the officer's name? It's a question of transparency. The public has a right to ensure that it's being protected and that those people who have been charged with that task are acting so properly. If we don't know the name, we have no way of vetting this officer and whether or not there have been prior offenses. Well, that's, while that's true, what about from the police department's sake of we throw this or this officer's name out there and this unhappy group is going to go right to his house? I think in that instance it has to do with the specificity of the threat that's at issue, that um, unsubstantiated uh, speculative uh, conclusory assertions that an af officer's life might be endangered or could be just by virtue of the fact of a, a given story shouldn't uh, prevent that kind of public accountability and scrutiny. I mean, uh, someone died. It's a fatality. Um, that should be subject to public scrutiny. On the other hand, as you mentioned, um, there are legitimate concerns. If there is a specific threat um, to an officer's life, um, you know, and if they can point to actual evidence of that, that could be something that could counterbalance what otherwise should be a default um, assumption that that information should be public. And that, that was, uh, we had a similar instance in the case of Geist, the dog, and the Salt Lake City Police Chief made a decision to withhold the name because they did say there had been death threats, uh, you know, among other things, but death threats among some of their officers. That's right. I think it has to do with, um, you know, how concrete those threats are. We don't want that to be the knee-jerk reaction every time there's an instance uh, like this. And what we want to avoid is having um, a name kept from the public uh, right. just because that's convenient to the officers rather than there being a specific threat that they are trying to protect the endangered safety of an officer. We often see the truth eventually works its way out. And sometimes for journalists, it doesn't work as fast as they would like. And so there's why isn't there this name or, or information right away. And uh, so, so how do you find a happy medium? Um, it's a question of responsibility both on the journalist's part and then on the, law, on the part of law enforcement protecting their officers. But in this case and in many cases, you just have to start asking. Uh, in Missouri, uh, immediate requests were made for the Freedom of Information Act, uh, seeking that name and then just staying with it until the information is released. And again, it's a balance of when exactly that timing is deemed to be appropriate. Does six days seem reasonable to you? I think it varies um, case by case. It depends on the specific facts. Um, you know, it seems like in this case we see that relationship working between the, the police and the media. The media holds them accountable after a period of days, um, whether it's from the public scrutiny, um, the media attention, um, or whatever. Maybe the threat has subsided. Um, we don't know those facts, but they release the name. Um, and there is accountability. The public may be able to get additional records about that officer's disciplinary background and determine um, you know, make further judgments about what's going on in the case. So in this instance, it seems like it did lead to uh, the information being disclosed. Um, the question is whether that should have been done soon. All right, we'll see where it goes. Austin McKenzie, thank you both for being here. Appreciate your insights. Thank you for having us. Still ahead on Primetime 5.
Uh, we're hoping with as much um, as we've got this guy's picture out there that somebody will recognize him. Orem police call it the surveillance selfie. How they hope this photo will.